Now that you know the basics of variables, constants and types, it's time to learn about another powerful concept of Swift, tuples. A tuple groups multiple values into a single compound value. The following example illustrates this concept. The stock constant is of type string float. Tuples can combine multiple values of multiple types and that is what makes them powerful. There are several ways to access the values of a tuple. The easiest is to use an index, which may remind you of arrays. What I like most about tuples is decomposition. In the following example we map the values of a tuple to a couple of constants. There is another option to access the values of a tuple. Instead of using indexes, you can use names to access the values stored in a tuple. In this example, we name each of the values of the tuple, and that allows us to access the values of the tuple by name instead of by index. If you're working with complex tuples, naming the values brings clarity and avoids confusion. When working with tuples, it's important to remember that tuples are designed for temporarily storing related data. Temporarily and related, those are the keywords. For more complex data structures, it's better, even recommended, to make use of classes and structures. Tuples are great as return values of functions and methods, for example. In Swift, you frequently come across optionals, and it's important to understand what they are and how to use them. The idea is simple. An optional is a container for a value of a particular type. And the container contains a value or it doesn't. Let me repeat that. An optional is a container for a value of a particular type. And that container contains a value or it doesn't. In this example, we declare an optional of type string. The question mark indicates that we're dealing with an optional. Add the snippet to your playground and inspect the output in the results panel on the right. The output should read nil. In Swift, nil means no value or the absence of a value. The meaning of nil in Swift and Objective-C is very different. That's important to understand and remember. Add the following line to your playground and take a look at the output on the right. Are you surprised? The output indicates that we're dealing with an optional. Because the value of an optional is wrapped in a container, you cannot access the value of an optional like you access the value of a variable or constant. The following example illustrates this. This expression generates an error. Click the red circle on the left to see what the error is about and what Xcode suggests we do to fix it. Let's give Xcode suggestion a try by adding an exclamation mark after the name of the optional. That seems to work fine. But what happens if the optional doesn't have a value? Let's update the example to see what happens if message doesn't have a value. When the optional message doesn't contain a value, a runtime error is thrown. This time Xcode leaves it out in the cold, not giving us any hints to fix the problem. Let's take a moment to discuss what happened and what went wrong. Let me first start by explaining the meaning of the exclamation mark. By appending an exclamation mark to the end of an optional, the optional is forced unwrapped. This means that we unwrap the value of the optional's container no matter what it contains. If the optional has a value, we can read the value. But if the optional's container is empty, a runtime error is thrown. If you force unwrap an optional that doesn't contain a value, your processor application terminates immediately due to a runtime error. Optionals should never be forced unwrapped unless you are absolutely certain it contains a value. Let me repeat that. Optionals should never be forced unwrapped unless you are absolutely certain it contains a value. Let's add some safety to the example. Before we assign the value of message to body, it's better to first check if the optional contains a value. We use an if statement to check if message is equal to nil. This means that we first ask the message variable if it contains a value. This is much safer and avoids the error we encountered earlier. 
The downside is that the solution is quite verbose. We need five lines of code instead of one. It seems that safety comes at a cost. A more common approach is to use optional binding to safely unwrap the value of the optional. This is illustrated in the next example. The condition of the if statement is known as optional binding. Swift inspects the value of message and assigns the value to the unwrapped message constant only if message contains a value. The unwrapped message constant is then available in the if clause. If message doesn't contain a value, the else clause is executed. The solution is still verbose, but it's easy to read and understand. Optional binding is very powerful. This example shows a more complex use of optional binding. It shows the power and elegance of optional binding. Even though it can take some getting used to, I'm sure you're going to appreciate optionals and optional binding in no time. Remember from this lesson that optionals are an important feature of the Swift language and that tuples are very useful for passing around multiple values as a compound value. In the next lesson we take a look at the collection types of the Swift standard library. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about Swift development and Cocoa development.